Thank you very much, uh, Margaret. Uh, sometimes when I see myself on the same podium with the Tennessee Justice Center, I say doing the right thing sometimes makes strange bedfellows. But, uh, but we do have something in common, and I know that there's a lot of people are wondering why a very conservative Republican was a co-sponsor of this bill in the Senate, along with another conservative Republican. It was Senator Doug Overby, who, is, who, lives, who works here in Knoxville. But he does live uh, down in Blount County, and he's one of our neighbors to the south that picked this up when other people would not. Uh, I want to go over again about why this makes financial sense, because you'll hear many of my conservative friends say that this is going to break the state, that it's going to cost the state a lot of money, that uh, we can't afford it, it's just another government program, it's, it's going to increase the federal debt. And I'm going to take just a minute to explain again what it's already been talked about a couple of times, but to let you understand how this thing is financed. A large portion of this money comes from cuts that were made in Medicare payments to the hospitals. So the hospitals are not only taking care of uncompensated care, the compensated care is less also. And what many people don't realize, even people with insurance are not paying as much because when we as physicians and hospitals negotiate contracts, we do that on a percentage of Medicare. For instance, if Medicare pays $100 for a procedure or something, then the hospital will try to get uh, one point, you'll multiply that by a coefficient of 1.6. So when Medicare gets cut, like they did to pay for this, then your insurance premiums go down also. And if you look between the years 2015 and 2022, there's, in, in the ordinary Medicare, there's $415 billion that are being cut to the hospitals to pay for Medicaid expansion. For any of our seniors that have the Medicare Advantage program, there's $156 billion being cut. Hospitals like the University of Tennessee receive, and Vanderbilt, and the medical centers in Memphis received previously from the federal government what's called disproportionate care funds. They take care of a disproportionate number of people with no insurance. Now, why the government did this is that they said, fine, we're going to cut Medicare down, but on the other hand, we're going to eliminate the uncompensated care. And the hospitals will end up in better financial condition and with a better financial situation. The problem is, is that Tennessee did not take the Medicaid expansion. We still got the cuts. And just as was mentioned a little bit earlier, there was a total of 7.4, I'm sorry, $740 billion in cuts that were, be, that were going to be made to cover the Medicaid expansion. Then there were also another $893 billion between 2015 in 2022 in new taxes, in uh, some of these are going to be the penalties that employers would have to pay if they didn't cover their patients. Uh, some of these were the penalties that individuals would have to pay if they chose not to have insurance. There were taxes on the Cadillac insurance plans. There were a whole host of those that would raise another $893 billion. So over the seven year period between 2015 and 2022, it was a total of $1.6 trillion dollars this isn't borrowed money, it's not money we got from China. This is money that has been cut from Medicare and this is money on new taxes. And this isn't taxes that most individuals are paying. Some of this, probably one of the, lar or not probably, one of the largest ones is what they call the medical device tax. If you had pacemakers put in, if you had uh, the automatic defibrillators, I'll talk about those. Uh, for any of you who don't know, I'm a physician and I do heart surgery for a living. So th this is money that's been taken out. This is money that, that it's not new money. We're not borrowing it from the Chinese. And then the other aspect that I think many people don't understand is how it's going to be paid for after the year 2020. The federal government will pay 90% of it, and it's coming from this money, this money that's being cut from Tennessee hospitals and Tennessee physicians. It's being cut from the Medicare payments. Plus, we have to match that with 10%. And what the hospital association has agreed to do is they're putting a tax on themselves, on themselves. 
And they've been actually doing this for a number of years. It was 4.5% on their revenue, and that allowed us to have a larger 10-care program than we would otherwise. This year, in the state legislature, we increased that up to 6%. And, that, and under present federal law, that's the much, as much as we can raise it. But that will totally cover the 10 per, actually it more than covers, the 10% that we will have to pay by the year 2020. And when Governor Haslam says that this will not cost the state taxpayers anything, it will not cost the taxpayers anything. And on top of that, the Tennessee Hospital Association said if there's other small costs, and we had a last minute paper that came through the governor's office saying there may be $7 million that we'll have to pay in new administrative fees to just to get people signed up. You know, you have to get folks signed up. There's going to be a little cost. The hospital system said that's okay. We'll pay it. This is no cost to the Tennessee taxpayer. This is a conservative telling you it's not going to cost us anything, and we, the Tennessee taxpayers, aren't going to have to pay anything. And on top of that, you'll hear the argument say, well, you know, we get these programs started, we can never get out of it, and oh my gosh, you know, the, we, we can't trust the federal government, we can't trust the hospitals. If you read the waiver that was to be submitted to the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, page 19, section 9, paragraph 2, says, Ex, not implicit, I mean, it says it explicitly. It says it, it doesn't imply it. That if the federal government does not pay their share, or the Tennessee Hospital Association does not pay their share and reneges, and there's a cost to the Tennessee taxpayer, the program will automatically be terminated. Now, some of you don't want to hear that, but I can tell you that I don't think it's going to happen because there's no advantage to the hospital to do it. If you think about it, they put up $1 and get $10 back. It's a pretty good deal. I wish I could get a deal like that. But that's why this program will remain viable. It is a good deal for everyone. It's a great deal for everyone. But I can tell you, as a conservative Republican, it sometimes is very lonely up there when you present these things because we're certainly in a minority. But what gives us strength those of us who support this is that we have some very powerful allies that are with us. The Tennessee Chamber of Commerce supports this. The Tennessee Business Coalition, these are the largest, some of the largest companies in Tennessee supports this. The Tennessee Hospital Association, the Tennessee Nurses Association, the Tennessee Medical Association, they all support this. And more importantly, as you saw from the polls, the Tennessee people support this also. And the reason all of those people support that is because it's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do because if this program passes, we'll have 280 to 300,000 Tennesseans who for the most part are hardworking people. You've heard some of them tonight. Hardworking people will have insurance when they didn't have insurance otherwise. We'll have 28,000 veterans and their families will have insurance. People that have served their country, people that have given us the freedom for reli of religion, the freedom to speak, the freedom to assembly like we do tonight. And they're not eligible for VA care. Some people think that veterans are all eligible, but they're not. They'll have insurance. We'll have an economic boom. It's the right thing to do because we'll have an economic boom in this state of over six to seven billion dollars over the next five years that will come in. You saw the statistics, 15,000 new jobs. That's like bringing five Volkswagen plants to this state. And we're not having to put up any money for development and we're not having to get any, any tax breaks. As a final word, and I'm gonna stop now so we can move on. If 20 years from now, we look back and this legislature asks itself, did we do something really important for the citizens of the state of Tennessee? And it won't be because we passed guns in parks or guns in cars or bars in cars or 
cars and bars or bars and cars or whatever, or we have the salamanders, the state amphibian. It'll be because we passed a program that gave insurance to nearly 300,000 of our citizens. Thank you very much.